Hello and welcome. Today we are going to be playing with Windows 3.1, because why not? There's actually an old game, a kind of a game, uh, called Spider-Man Cartoon Maker that I used to love to play with back in the 90s. So we're going to get Windows 3.1 up and running. And we don't need to do a virtual machine here, because if you remember, if you were around back then, Windows 3.1 and 95 and 98 actually ran on top of DOS. So you can actually run those in DOS box, because technically Windows 3.1 wasn't considered an operating system, it was an operating environment that ran on top of DOS. So we're going to quickly get it up and running in DOSBox. And you know what? You can find uh, copies of Windows 3.1 out there and go through the install process, but I've already made an image for you. Once you install Windows 3.1, it's only about 30, 35 megabytes. So I just made a zip file, you just unzip that in DOSBox into it, and you're good to go. So I'll give you a link to that in the description of this video will be all my notes, but I'll show you where to find all the notes as we go through them and you'll see what we're gonna do. And that's it, let's go ahead and jump right in. Here we are at filmsbychris.com. I wanted to point this out. Let me move my microphone a little bit, there we go. Let me, I wanted to point this out. That if you come in here and you go to software, and I pointed this out before, I have a few different things. I have my GitLab page, I got uh, a scripts page, I got uh, uh, GitLab search, so you can search through my GitLab page, but I also have notes. When you click on notes, it brings you to this little page I made that actually searches through all my paste bins, which I've been using paste bin, and I know it's not the best option, it's just what I've been using. I have this set up, so I haven't changed anything else, but I've using, been using paste bin for over 10 years, so there are thousands of notes in here. If we just type in Win31, you can see right here, we have quick Windows 3.1 in DOSBox, and this is all we need. We're going to install DOSBox, which I already have installed, but sudo apt install uh, DOSBox. And then we're going to grab our image here. Now, let me go over my shell here, and I'm in my temp directory. I'm just going to download that zip file, and it should only take a few moments. Uh, again, I posted this, if you look at it, I posted it over two years ago, and it's still there. Might disappear someday. Uh, but now we're going to unzip that. Then we're going to move into our Windows 3.1 directory, right? And if we listen here, this is the Windows 3.1 operating system. If I df-h, no, du-h with a space, you can see altogether it's, it's 19 megabytes. I said 30 some, I think that's with the Spider-Man cartoon maker. So that's it. We have our auto exec batch file, which is uh, a batch file, which is like a shell script for Windows that used to run when you started up Windows systems. And uh, so all we have to do is run DOSBox and run that, that, uh, that batch file. And when you run, a command with DOSBox, it's going to use whatever directory you're in as your home directory, so it's going to see this as your, not your home directory, but your C directory on a Windows machine. So we just DOSBox that auto exec batch, which I had modified to run Sound Blast stuff so that you can have sound, and just give it a moment to start here. And once DOSBox has started, it's, it will show us the Windows 3.1 logo. There we go. And we have Windows 3.1 running. And come in here and, you know, if you've never used Windows 3.1, it's an interesting experience. I used to love this thing back in the day. It's a pain in the butt now. Uh, but we can look at games. We have Minesweeper. We have Solitaire. You know, all the stuff you've come to expect. And we've got accessories here where you can have something like paint, which is awesome. Okay, so now we can close out of this. Now, I'm in DOSBox and it's grabbed my mouse. To release your mouse in DOSBox so you can get out to your main system, it's Control F10. Okay, now my mouse is out and I'm just gonna quit out of that. Now, going back to my notes here, so you have Windows 3.1 running with sound. Let me go back to my notes here and I'm just gonna type in Spider-Man and we have Spider-Man Cartoon Maker Windows 3.1. This is actually going to download a full copy of Windows 3.1 and the Spider-Man thing. So I'm going to make a directory called Spider-Man. I'm going to move into that directory. I'm going to download that zip file, unzip it, and run DOSBox. I'm going to copy this and do it all in one command. And yes, this is the one that's 34 megabytes. So about 15 megabytes of this is the Spider-Man Cartoon Maker. Uh, which you'll see is a fun little application. And what's really neat about it is back then there were really no standards on icons and stuff. So it's like, it's a very confusing program because it doesn't give you words. It's just like a cancel button is a thumbs down and a yes I think is a thumbs up. And to exit is a is a guy sleeping. <laughs> it's just, it's very weird and, and uh, takes a little bit getting used to. Uh, but once this 34 
megabyte file has downloaded. It's going to unzip. We'll move into that directory and start DOSBox. I'll pause here for a moment just to see, well, we only got four seconds left according to this. Very long four seconds. <laughs> I used to love this program back in the day. While, while uh, setting this all up, I found out that, because uh, somewhere in, in this application it says, be sure to try our X-Men cartoon maker coming out soon. And I looked that up, and that does exist. It's actually about 100 megabytes from what I read online. I haven't played with it yet. But same exact application from the screenshots, just with X-Men animations and backgrounds. Uh, but if you have not played with this program before, it, it's, it's interesting. And I have it set up so Windows 3.1 loads directly into the Spider-Man cartoon maker. Some fun music. And this is during the era, it's the 90s, so the uh, Spider-Man Animated Adventures was on TV, which is a great show if you've never uh, experienced that before. It went on for many seasons, and it's very well done. And there's even some early 3D uh, graphics in that cartoon. So here you can choose a background. I'll choose this background, and I'll click here. And now I can now add something like, let's see. These icons, you have to kind of click on it to see what's in it. I don't know if they're supposed to be loading, like if I go this up button is to go back a directory. I don't know if there's supposed to be images here, uh, but we'll click in here. Uh, we got people standing there. Let's go back to the first one, or where did I see that hydrant or something simple to put into the scene? There we go. We'll, we'll put a, a road construction sign. We can change the size of it over here. And there we go, we add that. Now let's add some characters to our scene. I'll just click one of these. Uh, we can have uh, Robbie Robertson, isn't that his name? We can have him walk in. So you just click and drag. It plays his music and the animation as you drag. I can drag him the other way now. So he's walking around and I'll walk him off the screen. Then I can come back in here and I can choose somebody else. Maybe there's a villain in here somewhere I can choose. Oh, here's Peter Parker. We'll have him run out. And then we'll have Spider-Man, if I can find a Spider-Man. There we go. So he ran off to the side. Maybe he got changed, and now he's coming out as Spider-Man. Now, if you ever stop and you still have the character on there, you can always reprint the background over top and any assets you have. If we come here, no, let's look here. Somewhere there's Spider-Man swinging. Let's get Spider-Man swinging. Here we go. And again, we can change the size over here. Maybe he's further back and he'll come swinging in. Now, when you're all done, you might think, oh, I'll press this button here, which is the camera, which will play, which actually I think creates a new scene. Again, I click it and I get the camera and this. It's like, what does this mean? And if I click that, I'm pretty sure it just clears out my scene. So I'm gonna click the down thumb to say no. Uh, you can try, I think you're supposed to be able to record audio, but uh, I think uh, the way I have audio set up in Windows 3.1, that's not working. I tried that and just made noise. But at this point, I can press play and it will play the animation I just created. So this is a great tool back in the 90s for kids or even teenagers as I was to make your own cartoons. This was awesome. Anyway, so that's getting Windows 3.1 up and running in DOSBox and having a game going in it. And again, I set it to auto load that. And again, when you're in DOSBox here, you're gonna wanna hit Control F10. That will release your cursor. Uh, you could also, there's, there's how do you shut down Windows 3.1? I think uh, maybe we click DOS and then we can click exit, type exit. No, that brings me back in here. How do you shut down Windows 3.1? Did you just shut, you didn't just shut off your machine. I wanna say you exited to the DOS prompt and may, maybe, um, shut down, no, power, hmm, I don't remember, I do not remember how to start or shut down Windows 3.1 once you're in it, but again, you're in uh, DOSBox, Control F10, and then, uh, you know, most machines, uh, Alt F4, or in my case, I have it set up to Windows and Q to kill that, so anyway, just a little thing, you might want to run some old software, uh, and a lot of software back then still ran in DOS, so you could just run it directly in DOSBox, but if you needed that Windows 3.1, check out the links in the description, which will bring you to uh, this script here and probably this script here, but you can always search through my notes 
uh, for something like DOSBox and see my notes on different DOSBox uh, scripts and Windows uh, 3.1, Win 3.1, and we have, and in the future I'll do a video if you want on compiling C code for Windows 3.1. So if you're interested in how to compile your own C code for Windows 3.1, I can do a tutorial on that. But for now, I do thank you for watching. Again, visit filmsbychris.com, and in here you can go to the software section to look through my notes and scripts and codes, uh, some games for you to play, and then also you can think about clicking on support, which will bring you to the support section where you can buy me a coffee. You can donate through LibrePay. You can donate through PayPal, and you can also donate through Patreon by becoming a Patreon supporter and getting videos early. Uh, I also, a lot lately, I've been mentioning how no one's ever supported me through buying me a coffee, which I did pretty new. Libre Pay, I've had for a while, no one. Well, just recently, someone's donated to both of them. I want to say someone gave me uh, a couple bucks through uh, buying me a coffee. I don't remember exactly. <laughs> Libre Pay, I think that was the one I got like 35 cents or maybe 65 cents. But anything, anything that you can donate to me helps. I mean, if I have 60,000 subscribers and you each give me 10 cents, hey, I'm doing pretty good. So think about that. If not, be sure to like, share, subscribe, comment, and all that good stuff. I thank you for watching. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.